Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. Did you have a productive day today? No, me neither. But that's okay, because today we're going to learn about render blocking and what it is and how important it actually is for fast loading websites. Now, if you know already what it is, then what you doing here? Get out of here! Get Sorry, I'm a bit sunburned, so I just lost my cool. I'm a bit emotional. That's normal. What you mean it's more red than tan? What you mean it's more red? Now, if you've worked with web development before, you've probably seen in your Firefox or Chrome DevTools this waterfall cascading effect with different colored blocks. Now, what does all of this mean? So essentially, when you go to a website, you're essentially going to hit some sort of server that's going to send you back the HTML document. And the HTML document needs to be downloaded and parsed. Um, However, the problem is when you have other static assets included in there, maybe a font, maybe a uh, maybe loads of JavaScript that you have bundled up. So those can block the rendering process in the browser. Okay, so let's actually have a look here. So I just have a literally just a HTML document here, right? And if we check in the browser, as you can see in the network tab here, uh, if we do a refresh, as you can see, nothing else really loads. Now I put a slow speed on this, like a slow Wi-Fi simulation. And that's it. Look at that. That's our waterfall. And if we hover over it, um, as you can see, the request was sent in like lightning speeds. And then we just waited for the server here. But the actual content uh, took only only like 0. Point, what was it? 0. 0.38 milliseconds to download, which is fantastic. All right, I wouldn't really worry about the server response here. Uh, so when we refresh again, let's have a look now. Yeah, it's still two because I have like a really slow network speed set on it. Now it's only 296 bytes. And also keep in mind, like if you keep adding this, right, the more HTML you have, of course, the slower it's going to be because the actual size of it is going to be much bigger. So as you can see now, it's 10 kilobytes. And that took a bit longer to actually download. All right, so keep that in mind as well. Now, one important thing to keep in mind is that images, so I have an eight megabyte image here, is not going to block the rendering pipeline, okay? So even though here, if I refresh this, uh, you're gonna see that it's in another, net, in another tab here, right? Um, if I load up some JavaScript or add some fonts or anything, um, it's not going to stop till the Im image is actually fully loaded up until it starts fetching those things as well. So keep in mind, images are not render blocking. So I'm on slow 3G as well. We have a large image. And as you can see, the HTML still loads up fine. And it's just going to separately fetch that image for you. Okay, what about style sheets? Well, you probably learned that you can add style sheets up here in the link tag like that. And yeah, that works fine. That's perfectly fine. And it helps you maintain a clean HTML file. And also you can modularize it. So maybe you have another page, you can add a different uh, style sheet there, or you can separate it with media tags as well. Um, but as you can see, it's here, it's gonna block it. But again, it's, it's not much. It really depends now how how much uh, styling you actually have, but styles are generally quite fast anyway. And this took 29 milliseconds to download. Now, again, if you have a super, super large file, um, yeah, it can slow it down a little bit, right? But what you can also do, rather than linking it like that, you can just include it in the head tag. So if you do inline styling here, uh, it's not gonna block the rendering pipeline anymore. So I'll just go down here and as you can see, I have this commented out. So if I take this and just uncomment it out, right? It's right here above the HTML tag. And then I can just get rid of this, to be honest. There we go. And let me also pop it right there in the head. So do, 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 do. let's get this style cut and paste it up here like that. Fantastic. So now if we do a refresh, there you go, we have all the styling and look at that, we don't actually have a CSS file that's blocking our content. So that's cool. Now this is fine to do it like this, or you can do a style.css, that's fine too. And there's not gonna be any you know negligible difference, but loads of people add it in the head tag to do, to basically load critical CSS, which is basically like, what you see on the like first page here, right? What's visible for the user's screen. And then the rest can be loaded uh, the other way. 
Okay, cool, awesome. Now, again, modern frameworks out there are gonna use uh, stuff like Tailwind, right? So if you're using Tailwind, I have this running here in Astro. Uh, again, the size does matter, right? So if you have, you know, like 5,000 lines of CSS, right? It's, it's gonna be a large file and there's nothing you can do about that. That needs to be downloaded. And that's why I really, really, really like Tailwind because it is faster than uh, CSS. Oh, I also want to mention that there's another way you can do this. You don't necessarily need to add a style tag here. You can just do inline styles as well, and that's going to be non-render blocking as well. But again, if you have something like Tailwind, then it's really fantastic because you just add your styles here. They're really nice, really short. And then when you're checking it out actually in the browser, so this is the Astro version of it. So as you can see, when you're using Tailwind, it's going to do a fantastic job of just minifying this as much as possible. Not only that, it's going to write better CSS than you because it's going to organize the CSS really nicely. So as you can see, it's all separated in these small utility classes. Okay, so here's an example that you might run into loads of times where you have a script tag, you're either loading it up like this or you're importing some sort of uh, JavaScript library. In this case, it's GSAP. And then I just have an app.js here that animates this a little bit, right? Uh, but it's not going to work. So if we check it out here, you're going to refresh the page and yeah, nothing's animating. And you're going to see, well, we're loading up the index HTML first, right? And then the GSAP, and then we're trying to run it. But if we check the network tab as well in the console, you're going to see title is not found. So what's going on? Well, as soon as the browser encounters a script tag, it's just gonna stop parsing the rest of the HTML, all right? Because it's 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 going synchronously if you write it like this. So you probably heard that. Oh well, you should just take this and move it all the way down here. Uh, and yeah, that's right. That's correct. Now you're gonna be able to actually uh, read this and look at that animated. So that's cool. So that works. Now what's the problem with this? So as you can see with the low speeds, it took like two seconds here until it actually started uh, doing the animation for us. So by default, scripts are blocking by nature and you can change that by adding something called the fur. And when you add the fur, the browser is gonna start automatically downloading this uh, JavaScript file in the background. And once the whole DOM content is loaded up, so your CSS and your HTML is fully rendered out with your images as well, once it gets the images, then it's gonna start executing the script. So what I did is I added the fur to both scripts. And now if I do a hard refresh and reload, you are gonna see that as soon as the DOM content loads, both of these are just gonna start executing. And you're gonna see another one called async here that you can use. Uh, and this works the same way. The only big difference is that it's gonna start running uh, as soon as it's available. So as soon as it's downloaded and parsed, it's gonna start running the script for you. So you might have, you know, maybe a condition where you might have an image that's just not loaded up yet and you're trying to animate it or do some weird JavaScript fancy tricks with it. Um, the async is not really gonna be your best bet. You're gonna need to wait till the whole DOM content is loaded. So I'd stick with the fur here. So switch it to the fur and then you'll be fine. When would you use um, async here? If you're working with like ads or stuff like that where it's not really dependent on the, on the DOM, um, so Anything that you can think of that's decoupled from it is gonna be a great case for async, all right? And when it comes to fonts, try not to go out and reach for Google and link it here through the CDN. It's always gonna be better if you just do it locally and save it locally and import it that way. So yeah, that's it. Hope it helps in any way. Now, again, don't worry. Most frameworks do a lot of this heavy work by themselves, uh, like code splitting and minifying your CSS and trying to avoid all these render blocking issues. But I do feel it's, it's quite good to know like a little bit of what's going on here, you know, without letting the frameworks do all the magic. So yeah, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Please drop a subscribe and a like, and yeah, check out the courses down below. Support this channel. I love you all lots, and I'll see you in the next video.